Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 2. I've got a couple of really short introduction lessons until we get to the heart of soul of it in section 2.4, where we'll um, do a few more labs and slow down a little bit. That's the, that's the main deal. In this little video, we're going to see the first two sections, and all they are are definitions. This is the first time you're going to hear the word equilibrium, and we're going to learn some of its characteristics. That's it. So the first thing we need to remember is that reaction can, reactions can go forward and reactions can go in reverse. We've seen that all through chapter one. So here's a very simplistic example. Going forward, this colorless gas will turn into a brown gas. And going in reverse, this brown gas will turn into the colorless gas. When these reactions happen at the same time, that's what equilibrium is all about. And there's a few special characteristics that we'll chat about. So I have it in a diagram for you, if that helps. Um, and I'll also uh, put it into the equation form. So the forward reaction is going that way, the reverse reaction is going back. Remember, the reverse reaction is simply the products smashing into each other, forming the reactants. Very, very simple. Don't read into that too much. I want to point out that these two reactions, even though we talk about them separately, are happening at the same time. This blank is in the reversible reaction, the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are going on at the same time. In the same beaker, we have N2O4 smashing into each other to make NO2. And at the exact same time, we have NO2 smashing in each other to make N2O4. Notice the double arrows here, showing you that there is a forward rate and a reverse rate. This graph outlines how the forward rate changes over time. It's identical to chapter 1. The forward rate is going to start off very fast because there's lots of reactants. And as the reactants collide, the rate um, will slow down because you're using up the reactants and as you use up reactants the rate slows down even more and as the rate slows down you use up less reactants and you use up less reactants and the rate slows down even more etc etc so the the rate looks like this the reverse rate is the opposite the reverse rate has to start off at zero because we have no products if there's no products there's no concentration there's no rate but what's happening is you're making the products very quickly. So if you're making the products very quickly, you're going to get a lot of concentration. And a lot of concentration is a faster rate. And so this graph is going to look like this. Right? They're going to be exactly inverse. So you start off with zero rate, and then the rate speeds up and mellows out. This sentence right here is almost embarrassing to type out, but that's kind of what's going on. It says, as the reaction continues, the slower rate will use up N2O4 more slowly. So the N2O4 will not decrease so quickly, and therefore the rate will not decrease quite as quickly. That's pathetic. I can't believe I've actually typed it out in my notes. But that's kind of what happens. You can replace that with N2O4 or NO2. The forward rate's going to slow down because you're using up reactants. And then as the reactants decrease, the forward rate slows down. And as the forward rate slows down, you use up less reactants. So it's, it's kind of like a, a, a sort of a looping sentence. And again, to repeat it with the products, you have no products at the beginning. And, and at the beginning, you're making the products very quickly, so that rate will go very fast. And then as you make the products more slowly and slowly and slowly, the reverse rate will slow and slow and slow until the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal. Which means you're making products at the exact same time that the products are making reactants. This means that the forward rate equals the reverse rate. Okay. If the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal, then the concentration of the products and the concentration of the reactants are now constant. 
They're not changing. They're being made and consumed at the exact same time, at the exact same rate. That is equilibrium. Equilibrium exists when the forward rate is making products at the exact same rate, at the exact same time as the reverse rate are making reactants. The actual word for it is dynamic equilibrium because it's continually changing, it's continually going back and forth. But we're lazy, we're just going to say equilibrium and that's completely fine. So there's a couple of details here. Equilibrium does not mean things have stopped. In fact, you have twice as much going on. You've got a forward rate and you've got a reverse rate. Everything continues. Okay. It's important to notice that you can't see these reactions take place. They call this a microscopic level. Okay. You can't see the collisions. If you could, that would be wicked. Think of how good your eyesight would be. You can't actually see individual gas molecules smash into each other and these reactions take place. Um, so those are, that's called a microscopic level. Another fancy word is things that are observ observable are called macroscopic. So the microscopic properties are smashing back and forth, continually changing, but the macroscopic properties or the observable properties um, are not changing. So concentration's not changing, pressure's not changing, volume's not changing, color's not changing, and temperature's not changing. Okay? Nothing is changing that we can physically see or measure. And because this is going to be a closed system, um, protected from everything else, if you never touch it, equilibrium will not change. So that means you can't change temperature, you can't change volume or pressure or concentration, you just let it go. If you don't change anything, equilibrium will stay that way forever. And because you have the forward rate and the reverse rate happening at the same time, there's really no such thing as reactants and products anymore. You've just got a mixture of reactants on the left and products on the right. But you can start this equilibrium from the left or the right. That's going to be hard for you to wrap your head around. We'll chat more about that later. So in this box, tomorrow we're going to start with what are the characteristics. There's three or four of them. And that's the end of the uh, 